Uh, and then there's a new trailer for Pokemon Sun and Moon, which reveals six new Pokemon. Uh, though I imagine we have nothing to say about that, because um, <laughs> we've said a lot in the past. But it also introduced new Alola forms of a few pre-existing Pokemon. So Executor, the Sandshrew line, and the Vulpix line are all found in Alola with new types and new designs. Uh, we'll have more on this in the Dreamland segment in a little bit, but quick thoughts on this, guys? Um, awesome. Thank you very much. This is, mm-hmm, this is great. Right? Like, it just, it opens the door to so many possibilities. Mm -hmm. This this has probably been the best selling point for this game for me since it was unveiled, just because I I just love the idea of of reimagining old old Pokemon. Definitely. my favorite part of this is that Pokemon actually has a sort of element of evolution to it now. Like, Pokemon evolutions aren't evolution at all, but this, the sort of, you know, adapting to the environment and changing their types and things like that, I think that's a really cool way to show how actual evolution works in the Pokemon world. Totally. And I love how they took a Pokemon that lives in sand and two fire types and said, you know, if they're living in Hawaii... They'd be a lot more comfortable if they were made out of ice. <laughs> the idea of evolution's there, but it's not working quite right. Yeah, uh, they're just gonna melt, I think. But hey, they they survive somehow, <laughs> apparently. Uh huh. I have always enjoyed when they've done sort of similar things to this in the past games. They've never gone this all out, obviously. But things like the uh, different uh, forms for Gastrodon, based on which. Mm-hmm. Uh, side of the continent it was on and those mm-hmm. sorts of things yeah. always I always felt like Pokemon needs to really go really hard in on that and this is a nice yeah. touch um, and I, I love the idea of Alolan form Pokemon and I think the designs are some of the best this generation and I totally admit that that's because they're so derivative of older Pokemon designs but if that's what it takes I mean so be it uh, like we've talked before about how the old Pokemon designs aren't the most creative but more so than the newer generations, they're simple, they're striking, and they feel like an organic kind of creature. Uh, and that's when I think Pokemon is at its best. So adapting Pokemon to a new region instead of trying to create tons of new monsters to fill the region with is just perfect. It addresses the metagame, it's a great blend of old and new, it solves the problem where every region has their Pidgey clone yeah. and their Rattata clone, and, and most importantly, it feels organic. It's like that real Darwinian evolution. Um, it's one of those rare, brilliant ideas that just seems so obvious in hindsight and kind of makes me wish that they'd thought of it a long time ago. On the bright side, this is something that they could mine forever and ever and ever and ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. And with the results so far, I mean, like you said, this is this is some creative stuff. Like, who would have thought that the trick to making Exeggutor brand new again was would be to make it have this really long and narrow neck? <laughs> like... <laughs> Absolutely nobody. I I mean, looking at it being a palm tree, like that makes total sense. But like, I Uh never would have, I never would have arrived at that. I know, Uh, it's crazy. I wonder how they're going to manage that in like the Pokedex and stuff, though. Because if we've got a Vulpix and like Ninetales, like Ice and Fairy type, uh, we've heard that the way that to get the old forms of Pokemon is actually pretty much just transferring them up from. Uh, the virtual console re-releases, but I wonder if they're going to be entered in the Pokedex in a different way when they're the fire types, or, um, you know, I, I just don't know how that's going to work out. And I kind of hope it's something like Unknown, where the species is registered in the Pokedex, and then the different forms it takes are sort of found in, like, a subgroup. But yeah, then I, I question really how they're going to prioritize which form is, like, the true kind of thing that registers in your Pokedex, and what's derived from there. Well, I bet for the Alola Pokedex, you'll see the Alola form, and then for the like yeah. national decks, you'll probably see the original form first, and then the Alola form as kind of like a tabbed yeah. option. That, that would just be yeah. how I would do it. Right. Um, and if we say it on the podcast, it comes true. <laughs> um, and I could see them adding like a line for location, because that that's now going to be an important thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to this Nintendo Week Clip NWC. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more highlights and discussion videos from Nintendo Week Podcast, or subscribe to us on iTunes for weekly breakdowns of all your Nintendo news, discussion segments on subjects, games, and more, and tons of other features. Thanks for listening, and we will see you tomorrow with another NWC.